Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on Magic Browser by Mr. Vishal Shah. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Synosoft Technologies. He is known as seasoned technology stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, go-to guy for MSMEs. We also have Mr. Sudhir Chaube, co-founder of Synosoft in the panel. He looks after the sales and marketing aspect of our organization. We proudly announce the launch of new technology by Synosoft known as Magic Browser. It is cutting edge innovation to solve a severe, severe problem. He will unveil the Magic Browser that solves many severe problems like data leakage and misuse of internet. He will demonstrate the technology and explain how it extends internet access to enterprise users without any possibility of time pass and data leakage. He will demonstrate the technology and explain how it extends internet access to the enterprise users without any possibility of time pass and data leakage. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in the question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the question at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you want to ask any question in the end of the session, you may please raise your hand. We shall activate your microphone to ask the question. Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Good afternoon all. Thank you Prasanna for a generous uh, introduction. So today we are uh, back with uh, a very interesting topic and we call it as a magic browser technology. So basically, let me give you a pretext of uh, what it is about and why uh, we are presenting it or why we have invested in the R&D and uh, developed this technology. So basically, when we talk about digital assets of any organization, digital assets are prone to internet, uh, uh, internet uh, uh, leakage of digital assets through internet. So basically it comes under uh, in, insider threats. So most of the times organization has to allow internet to its users to do business. At the same time, internet can be misused to leak the data or steal the data from the organization. One can easily upload it on some drive or cloud storage or attached in a personal email. So basically internet is required as well as internet is dangerous. And there is always a dilemma and uh, there is always kind of a uh, lack of confidence whether we should give internet and when we give internet, how we stop the data theft. So IT, and the IT industry has a lot of uh, technologies to offer, a lot of solutions to offer. And most of these solutions are either in firewall, uh, either in firewall category or in DLP category. The uh, biggest uh, challenge with these solutions is basically it generates a lot of logs, a lot of data, which one has to monitor, one has to analyze, and then find out if there is any data theft. It hardly gives us a proactive approach to prevent the data theft over internet. So uh, I would term it as it is kind of maximum monitoring and minimum control kind of uh, uh, solutions. And many a times these solutions are ineffective when user is working remotely. So basically there was a need to have a practical solution which works on a zero trust approach instead of on a different approach. Zero trust approach means there is no possibility that data can be leaked over internet. And when we implement zero trust policy, of course, it creates a lot of hassles uh, to the users. And we have to make sure that there are least hassles to the user or there are no hassles to the users. And at the same time, our data is safe from leakage or theft. So it is a very kind of utopian thinking, but yes, um, if we try hard and uh, do and, and try to do a lot of uh, experiments, you can, derive such technology which can balance between uh, restrictions on the users and freedom of the user and magic browser is all about it um, in coming sessions i'm going to explain various things and of course we are going to demonstrate this technology also 
So before we move to next slide, uh, I request Prasanna to launch the poll in order to closely understand the profile of the people who are attending this particular session. So the results of this stakeholders poll um, is on your screen. And as we see that 33% of the attendees are owners or custodians of enterprise data. They are the most worried people while giving access to the uh, users, giving internet access to the users. 47% of the attendees are working IT professionals. It is their job to make sure their organization's data is not stolen or leaked over internet and uh, they are the maximum in this particular uh, attendee group. And 20% are IT professionals helping MSMEs on data leakage prevention. So I think we have very, very relevant uh, audience and we can very well uh, deal with their questions. So let's move to the next slide. So first of all, we'll understand the challenges. Why internet is a resource with risk. So internet is a resource to do business for tax filing, for banking, for logistics, for procurement, for tender beads, even for email communication. We use software as a service nowadays for many of our business operations like CRM or HRMS or many other things. We use internet for travel bookings. We use internet for messaging. We use internet for business development and we use internet for research. So we cannot imagine business without internet. And if we deprive our users of internet, they will not be able to do business for us. So internet is definitely a resource. Now let us understand what kind of risks it brings with itself. So first risk is time pass. Um, today, Amazon has a full page advertisement that uh, they're having this sale and uh, whatever petty thing one wants to buy, but they might spend hours and hours on exploring the products on Amazon or maybe time pass on YouTube. So that is a risk or hazard. It comes with internet access. Of course, data leakage, confidential data can be leaked over internet. It comes with a lot of vulnerabilities. Many a times people download some software and it might come with a lot of malware and it might harm or attack the system. Internet, when we are live on the internet, we are vulnerable to any intrusions by the hackers. And when user is working remotely and he is or she is accessing internet, we cannot really implement our enterprise IT policies on that particular user when he is out of our network. So these are the risks. As a resource, it is necessary. It is mandatory. So we cannot really cut down on usage of internet as resource. At the same time, we have to deal with the risks. So this is very important to balance between freedom of the users and mitigating the risks coming with the internet. And we are going to derive it further. So before we move to the next slide, I would like to understand the 
attendees feedback on this particular this particular point where internet is a resource with risk So the results are out on the screen. So 68% of, uh, of the attendees uh, perceive productivity loss due to time pass on internet as a risk. 84% of the attendees uh, consider sensitive data leakage over internet. 89% of the attendees fear malware and ransomware attack due to indisciplined use of internet. And 58% of the attendees are worried about IT policy dilution on remote users outside the firewall network. So most of the attendees have uh, very well understood the risks and taken them very seriously. So now let us understand what could be the approach. So before we can derive our own approach, let us look at the traditional approach, how this particular risk is mitigated using traditional approach. So we will see now the traditional methods of controlling internet. So the biggest, the traditional methods are either you install a DLP agent or you install a firewall in your network, make the policies on that particular DLP agent or make the policies on that particular firewall. You make sure that users can go to the right websites only, but there are challenges. The first challenge is accuracy of content filter. So most of the DLP and firewalls work on content filter. They have categories of internet websites and we can allow or disallow those categories. It is like e-commerce website category. It is like stock market website category. It is like storage, uh, cloud storage category. So they have their own database and they classify billions of websites on internet in these categories. And when IT manager or IT strategist makes the policy, he or she defines the users can access certain category of website and users cannot access certain category of website. So let's say as an IT strategist, we have defined a category that users cannot access any websites which have drives, cloud drives on which data can be uploaded or they cannot access certain websites which are offering email services. So of course, whatever websites are listed in that particular database of the content filter will be denied to the users. But the accuracy of the content filter cannot be perfect. And if anything is left out, and in most of the cases, it also happens. Most of these content filters have an accuracy level of 65%. So they can actually classify maximum 65% of websites in specific category. So if they are unable to detect that website, user can go to that website and it defeats the purpose and data theft or leakage happens very easily without the knowledge. Another challenge with firewall environment is limited outreach of firewall environment. So let's say I'm sitting in the office and um, I am under my firewall network, it is okay. What if I go home or I work remotely 
I might be accessing something else. I will be out of my firewall network and it is difficult and expensive to enforce the organization's internet policy to a remote user. The third biggest challenge is use of mobile hotspot. On my laptop, I might do one thing. I might just connect my mobile phone and uh, connect the internet by making it a hotspot. And I will be out of my firewall network and I can do whatever I want. So this is another challenge. And fourth, most important and least understood challenge is dilemma of gray websites. What do we mean by gray websites? So these websites are sometimes useful and sometimes harmful. For example, Dropbox. So Dropbox is a very uh, efficient tool or vTransfer is a very efficient tool to transfer large files. And they are kind of gray websites. So let's say vTransfer or Dropbox, these kind of websites allow users to upload the data. These kinds of website allow users to download the data also. So many a times they are harmful because it allows upload of the data and we allow these websites. If we allow these websites, user can upload our data and download from somewhere else and data leakage happens. Sometimes these websites are useful as a business case. Let's say a customer wants to send us a file he uploads it on the Dropbox or he uploads it on the vTransfer and tells us to download. At that time, genuinely, user will require to use that particular website to download the file. So that's the reason these kind of websites are sometimes useful and sometimes harmful. And that is why they are the gray websites. So as an IT strategist, you cannot take a stand on these websites that I will allow these websites or I will not allow these websites. So this is a big challenge. Now, looking at the consequences of these challenges, the first consequence is insider data theft. Another consequence is IPR breach, productivity loss compliance default. See, most of the MSMEs are either suppliers to large enterprises or exporters. In order to get empaneled to an overseas customer or to a large enterprise, they need to comply with certain mandates. And one of the mandates by most of these large companies is cybersecurity and information security. And they have to comply and when they don't have good control on their internet, they might default on their compliance. And of course, if data is leaked or stolen, it can result in competitive losses. And that is one of the most grave consequences of not being able to control the internet access and it has its genuine challenges. So, let us understand how we can solve. So now we have understood the problem. Now we have understood the consequences of the problem. We have found that this problem is a serious problem and that's the reason its consequences are very serious. So it calls for a very good solution which can solve this problem completely. Traditional solutions fail to do so fully because whatever they offer is a partial solution. Whatever they offer is not a confident solution. So let me understand your feedback on these points before we move to unveiling the magic box, magic browser, sorry, magic browser on, on our, on, on this webinar.
So the results are out. So 45% of the attendees um, understand that accuracy of the content filter database is a challenge. 50% of the attendees understand that limited outreach of the firewall environment is also a problem. 60% highest, not highest, 60% understand that use of mobile hotspot is a big challenge, which bypasses the firewall network. And 65%, you know, are finding gray websites as a big challenge. So it is a problem. Now we all understand that it is a problem. So now let us see the solution which solves it 100% in a very zero trust approach. So let me explain that to you now. So how the magic browser is deployed? So magic browser is an app which is installed on your computer system or laptop. It has an agent on the device. So you have some resident agent on the device which user cannot uninstall. That agent inherits the policies from a service on the cloud. So you configure the policies for that particular user on the cloud login of Magic Browser. It enforces a zero trust policy, means right now in your firewall, you are making the policy that what user cannot access, what is prohibited. It is completely an upside down approach, which is a zero trust approach where we can define that what websites user can access means minimum required website list, which is fed on the cloud service. So you know that these websites are only accessible to the users. There is nothing else accessible to the users is the first step. So it gives you maximum control and you don't have to really monitor it, minimum monitoring, because you are sure that you have an agent installed. So if agent is installed, the policies are made on the cloud and that agent inherits those policies. And what are those policies? Those policies are actually conveying the list of websites the user can access. Means if I know that my banker is HDFC bank, I would allow HDFC bank website. We know that certain users require GST, they can access it. Certain users can access income tax, certain users can access blue dot, whatever websites we think that are necessary for the users and have no scope of theft. You can allow there. Don't allow Dropbox, don't allow Google Drive, don't allow Gmail, nothing. So this is the first part of it. Now, coming to the gray website part or coming to the research part. Now you cannot, you can of course define what user requires to do business, but you cannot define what user requires to do research or what user requires to surf for business development. You cannot do that. And for those websites, which you think that you are not sure that user should access or not, they can be accessed only in the magic browser. And that magic browser will not allow user to upload anything. It will only allow user to download. So that is how you are allowing user with minimum required website where user can upload the data also. Like on GST, you have to upload the data. On bank, you have to upload the data. So in normal browser, you allow only the websites you think that they are minimum required by the users. And rest of the websites, which you are not sure whether they are gray websites or whether they are research oriented websites or whether they are business development oriented websites. You don't know what are those websites. You don't have to know. Just offer them magic browser. They can go into any website in the magic browser, which will not allow them to upload anything. We'll see this. So you have zero dependence on internet source. Why? Because you have an agent. So whether the user is in your firewall network, whether user is on remote place, 
whether user is accessing internet from uh, mobile hotspot or airport Wi-Fi, you don't have to worry about it because the agent enforces the policy in your normal browser and that will allow only the minimum required website. That's why it is zero dependence on internet source. Then provision for minimum allowed website means user can access those websites along with the data. Then there is no dependence on content filter. Now you don't need a content filter because you know what you want user to access with your data and you don't know about what user would like to access for research or uh, uh, business development. You don't have to know about it. Just give them the magic browser. It is only one way data transfer. So when user is on magic browser and let's say he has opened vtrans or he, he has opened vtransfer or he has opened google drive or he has opened dropbox he can only download the data he cannot upload the data in the magic browser and in data isolation technology while user is in magic browser your clipboard and everything else will be disabled so user cannot even copy and paste something from the normal browser or normal applications or from your uh, ERP application or Word, Excel, whatever to magic browser. So this is about the magic browser, how it works. And we will see how it works. So it solves three problems. One, you don't have to get into the complexities of content filter and categories of the internet. You know these websites are required by the user, just allow them. You also know that these websites cannot be misused for data leakage. HDFC banks or state banks website cannot be misused for data leakage. GST website cannot be misused for data leakage. At the same time, you don't have to worry about any other thing. Whatever which is not there in your minimum required website list is available on Magic Browser. So user does not have to contact the IT strategist or IT manager every now and then that I require access to this website, I require access to this website, nothing. He can go to Magic Browser, work on that particular website. He can download whatever he wants, but he cannot upload anything. So this is something which is all about Magic Browser. So we are going to have a demonstration of Magic Browser uh, after this particular slide. So I request Prasanna to uh, launch the poll, please. So the results are um, on the screen. So 78% of the attendees believe that all of the above means solution to handle mo mobile or spot, no need for content filter and one way data transfer are the appealing features. They are interesting features and they think that it can solve the problem. So now uh, let us see the demonstration. So first of all, what we will do is so now please re remember there are two browsers in user's computer. One browser is a normal browser, whatever browser he uses, and another browser is a magic browser. For normal browser, you have to just define which websites that particular user should be accessing. And that is done on the cloud console and we will see how it works. So first of all, I request uh, my technical team to uh, go to the cloud console and show us how we can define the required website, minimum required website list for the Magic Browser. So 
so here we can just go to the uh, web filter yeah take any user's example so here to this user we have allowed him hdfc website any website which is government website means any website which has gov.in extension sbi icici nic uh, blue dart what else can you go down dd dtdc something black box whatever then zoom whatever so these are the websites only allowed to the users in his normal browser and rest is in, in magic browser now we will log on as a user can you please log on as a user user's laptop So here the agent is installed, which is there. You can see this magic browser agent is already installed. It has normal browser. First of all, let us open the normal browser. So user is having a normal browser where we will try to open the websites which are allowed. Can you open hdfcbank.com? It will open. Now just understand this agent is controlling this internet access. So whether the user has connected mobile hotspot or whether user has connected airport Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter. On mobile hotspot, he will be able to open HDFC, but he will not be able to open Dropbox. Can you open dropbox.com? He cannot open Dropbox because we have not allowed it. But now let's say Dropbox is a gray website, right? It is harmful sometimes, it is not harmful sometimes. Now let's say customer wants the user to access Dropbox to download the file, what will he do? He cannot access Dropbox, so he will access Magic Browser. Uh, can you close this window and go to Magic Browser? So this is a Magic Browser. Can you just open that Magic Browser? Log on. So this is the magic browser. Now open Dropbox here. you can open it. Now just minimize this magic browser and go to normal browser. Open Dropbox here. You cannot open. Now just copy this and paste, try to paste it somewhere. Just copy some URL here. Yeah, copy it. Now try to paste it on Magic Browser. To paste it here. Just paste it here. You cannot paste it. So paste is disabled here. So whatever clipboard is taken either from Word, Excel, Tally, off your normal computer system will not be carried to the Magic Browser. And user can access the Dropbox. Just uh, open uh, some drive.google.com or something, please. Just open drive.google.com in Magic Browser. Now, uh, just right click on this, any logo image of Google on the left side, right click on that. Uh, no, it is not a link, just open down, try to download anything from this. Yeah, this right click on this image and download this image. Yeah, save image as. So he can save the image, but he cannot upload anything from here, just open it. So when the file dialog box opens, it does not give access 
to the file explorer of your normal computer system. You cannot take anything from here, from the computer system. Go to, go to desktop or something, please. Yeah. So you can download it here. Now try to upload something there. Uh, let me uh, show you something. Yeah, just try to upload something. Just sign in with some ID. Let's say this is a personal Google Drive and he wants to upload something. So now we have opened Google Drive. Now try to upload new image. Upload. Hmm. New image, okay. Upload file upload. So he's in magic browser, he's accessing Google Drive and trying to upload. He will not have access to his data. Just create one folder. Mm -hmm. Click on desktop. Nothing. Anything he uh, does he will not have access to it nothing nothing so he cannot upload anything he can only download yeah we can close this so now there are two windows in parallel on his computer system one allows him the access of only the website which are allowed by us and another which allows him the access of anything and everything he wants. At the same time, it will not allow him to upload anything. It will only allow him to download. So that is a zero trust policy. That is the minimum monitoring and maximum control approach to data theft or data leakage. So this is all about Magic Browser. We have a lot of time today. Uh, I would like to answer uh, if you have any questions. You can uh, raise your hand or write your questions in Q&A or raise your hand. I can answer that question. We will unmute you also in case you want to ask the question. In case you want to ask the question on the palette, you can just click on Q&A and ask the question. You can raise your hand and ask the question. Hello. Yes, Bhavesh, we can hear you. Yes, Magic Browser is a combined product with the black box only, or is it only individual product? No, uh, it is an in, uh, it is a combined product also, as well as it can be subscribed to individually. 
Okay. If so, customer doesn't have a black box, he can also buy a magic wand. Yes. Yes. In that, uh, it will come with an agent which will harden the computer system so that uh, user cannot be an admin of the system, so that he cannot uninstall the agent. And uh, uh, you will have a console in which you can define which websites you want to allow uh, for that particular agent. And uh, uh, you will also have a magic browser application. So it will be a cloud application, cloud-based, agent-based application. So you can have it with black box, you can have it without black box also. Is that minimum user criteria? Is five user, 10 user like that? Or 10 user. 10 user. Yeah, anyone else, please? So we can uh, wait for uh, two, three more minutes if you have any questions uh, or else you can connect with Prasanna. Yes, Bhavish Bhai. Then what is the security if it is uh, allowed to download the, anything from browser? Then security of malware or like that. And, yeah, uh, for that purpose, we recommend that the computer system which is using Magic Browser should have a good antivirus on itself. Okay. okay. So it will filter it. Okay. Yeah, anyone else who wants to ask a question? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Prasanna, we can uh, conclude the session. Thank you, sir, uh, for such an insightful and knowledgeable session. Sudhir, sir, I request you to give us uh, concluding remarks for this event. Yes, thank you, Vishalji, for uh, highlighting the new uh, feature and uh, the technical team which has come up with a new innovation for Blackbox. And the beauty about this solution is that users can use this solution without having a black box also. So it is an independent tool which can be used widely by everyone, whether they procure black box or not uh, having black box in their premise or on cloud. So congratulations to your team. And uh, thank you participants for attending this session. Uh, for any further queries or knowledge that you uh, want on this uh, particular solution, you can connect to our uh, local connects or you can drop an email to Prasanna. We will be happy to assist you. And uh, thanks once again to everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much.